Good evening, Zion. Good evening. What a joy and privilege it is to be with you on tonight, on this Tuesday evening. God has just been so gracious and so wonderful to us. I am so excited uh, to be here in the month of November. We are ever drawing near uh, to the Turkey Day. We thank God for just how great he has been to us in these 11 months. It has just been an awesome year. It has been a trying year, but it has been a year where God has been showing us what it means to go through rebirth. We thank God for the promise of rebirth. We thank God that all things are truly passed away and that God is making all things new. And so I'm excited uh, for what God has been doing in the month of November, and I'm excited for what God is going to be doing in December as we move closer uh, to January 2020. Even now, let folk know that Pastor is online, that he is live, as we get ready to open up the Word of God to continue into the next two chapters of the Bible. As you let folk know that we are live, I'm going to begin in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you for tonight's reading. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into the household of faith, God, to open up the Word of God, God, and to study your Word. God, we pray collectively and individually that God, as your spirit falls here in the kingdom, that God, that same spirit that falls here live in the kingdom, will translate and permeate through the telephone, through the camera, to, through Facebook, to wherever your people may be watching. God, we pray that your spirit transcend time and space so that those who may be watching years from now will feel your same power on tonight will be transformed, God, by the receiving of your word and the Holy Ghost. God, we pray even now that you preempt every plan and attack of the enemy that will seek to rob, subtract, and detract from this moment that we have with you. Let us have a spiritual Holy Ghost encounter so that, God, when we read your word, we know that it's more than just black lettering on white paper that God, your word is living like a living flame that burns. God, we thank you for the power of your word, for the anointing of your word, for the leadership of the Holy Spirit, for the blessing of life that has been given to us by the blood Jesus shed on Calvary. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Tonight, we'll be reading from Exodus chapter 5 and Exodus chapter 6. The pastor will be reading from the New King James Version. If you open up your Bibles, we're going to begin in Exodus, the fifth chapter, Exodus chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me, in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is this Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, nor will I let Israel go. So he so they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the desert and sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Then the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, Why do you take the people from their work? Get back to your labor. And Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are many. Now, and you make them rest from their work? So the same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, You shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And you shall lay on them the quota of bricks that they made before. You shall not reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry out, saying, 
let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let more work be laid on the men, and they, that they may labor in it. Let them not regard false words. The taskmasters, verse 10, of the people and their officers went out and spoke to the people saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go get yourself straw where you can find it, yet none of your work will be reduced. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters forced them to Harry, saying, Fulfill your work, your daily quota, as when there was straw. Also the officers of the children of Israel, whom Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, uh, were beaten uh, and were asked, Why have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday, today, and before? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried out to Pharaoh, saying, Why are you dealing thus with your servants? There is no straw given to your servants. And they say to us, Make brick. And indeed your servants are beaten, but the fault is in your own people. And he said, You are idle, idle. Therefore you say, Let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. Therefore go now and work, for no straw shall be given to you, yet you shall deliver the quota of bricks. The officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in trouble after it was said, you shall not reduce any bricks from your daily quota. Then as they came out from Pharaoh, they met Moses and Aaron who stood there to meet them. And they said to them, let the Lord look on you and judge, because you have made us abhorrent in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants to put a sword in their hand to kill us. Verse 22. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Why is it that you have sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people neither have you delivered your people at all chapter 6 verse 1 then the Lord said to Moses now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh for with a strong hand he will let them go and with a strong hand he will deliver them out of his land and God spoke to Moses and said to him I am the Lord I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, your God, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel, but they did not heed Moses because of anguish of spirit and cruel bondage. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Go in. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to let the children of Israel go out of his land. Moses spoke before the Lord, saying, Children of Israel have not heeded me. How then shall Pharaoh heed me? For I am of uncircumcised lips. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, and gave them a command. 
the children of Israel and for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Egypt out of the land of, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Verse 14. These are the heads of their father's houses, the sons of Reuben. The firstborn of Israel were Hanuk, Pelu, Hezron, Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jehim, Zohar, Shabal, the son of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations. Gershon, Kohath, Merai, and the years of the life of Levi were 137. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shimi, according to their families. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Ishar, Hebron, Uziel, and the years of the life of Kohath were 133. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. These are the families of Levi according to their generations. Verse 20. Now Amram took for himself Joshebed, Yoshebed, his father's sister, as wife. And she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137. The sons of Ishar were Korah, Neph, Eg, Ziphri. The sons of Uziel were Mishael, Lisphan, and Zephri. Aaron took for himself Lesheba, the daughter of Abimnadeh, sister of Nashon, as wife. She bore him Nadab, Abhu, Eliezer, and Ishtmar. The sons of Korah were Asher, Athna, and Absa. These were the families of the Korites. Eliezer, Aaron's son, took for himself one of the daughters of Putiel, his wife, as wife. And she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the father's houses of the Levites according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said, bring out the children of Israel from the lands of Egypt according to their armies. These are the ones who spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are the same Moses and Aaron. Verse 28. And it came to pass on the day the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, I am the Lord. Speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, all that I say to you. But Moses said to the Lord, Behold, I am of uncircumcised lips. How shall Pharaoh heed me? And this is the conclusion of this week's reading. I pray even now uh, that the reading of the Lord blesses your soul and your spirit. One of the things that I find very interesting about uh, Exodus uh, chapter 5 um, specifically is that when Moses encounters some hardship in his assignment, he begins to question the Lord. God tells him to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. God even tells uh, Moses and warns Moses about the resistance that may come about uh, on Egypt's part. But God promises Moses that he will be with Moses, give him the words to say. When Moses comes before Pharaoh and says to Pharaoh what God tells him to say, Pharaoh laughs at Moses and then increases the labor of the Israelites and removes one of the key ingredients, key ingredients that they need to fulfill the task given to them by the Egyptians. 
to make bricks. Well, to make bricks, they needed straw. Pharaoh says, no, you're idle. You're so idle. Instead of doing your work, you want to talk about going out in the wilderness and, and sacrificing to your God. Let me increase your task, and I'm going to make it harder to complete. And as a result of that, the people of God, the children of God, begin to get upset at Moses, and Moses in turn begins to say, well, God, why did you send me here? And one of the things that God has been showing me is that when God gives us an assignment, he never says it's going to be easy. In fact, when you begin to do what God tells you to do, you're going to come up against resistance. Why? Because the devil does not want you to complete that which God has called you to do. So he would love to discourage you and to dissuade you early on in your attempt to complete what thus saith the Lord so that God's will cannot take place on the earth. But it's up to all of us to remember that God said that he is with us, that he would not leave us or forsake us, to remember the promise that God gave to Moses, and that was that he would teach him what to say. And remember that God has not sent you without preparing you. He has not sent you without giving you exactly what you need. So instead of getting afraid or becoming dissuaded or deciding and making up in your mind that maybe I should just backtrack from what God has called me to do, it is in those moments where you've got to press in ever harder to God and say, okay, God, I need you to give me just another portion of oil. I gotta give, you need to give me just another portion of your spirit so that instead of running away from that which you've called me to do, I'll run even further in to what you've called me to do. I've got to push past the opposition that seems to be running before me. I've got to pull a Lamar uh, Jackson, that's right, and be able to get beyond the opposition, the defensive lines that are wanting to come against me to stop me from getting to the touchdown that God has called me to score. I believe by faith that there are some Moseses that I'm talking to that God has assigned you in this year to do some great things. But you've looked down the field and you see the armies of the devil that are seeking to block you and stop you. But I'm here to tell you that if God called you and if God spoke to you, that means God is putting you everything that you need. So run the ball and watch how God gives you the victory. As we go before the Lord in prayer, our Father and our God, we thank you for the examples and the lessons of Exodus chapter 5 and chapter 6. God, we thank you for the lessons that we can learn from Moses, what it means to hear you and to trust you and to not doubt you, but to listen and obey. God, it is our prayer that as we begin to close out the year of 2019, that God, you'll give us the ability to listen, to not just hear, but to listen and be obedient, to not allow the resistance that comes from the enemy as we are seeking to accomplish the work that you have for us to cause us to stop. Instead, God, help us to see the resistance as a sign that we must be doing something right and to keep on keeping on in you. Help us to not get weary and help us to not get dismayed. Help us to keep on keeping on in you, pressing toward the mark of the high call. Knowing, God, that all of this, even the stress and the trials, the pain, the whatever, shall pass. That there is victory on the other side. And now, God, as we conclude tonight's reading, it is our prayer that you give us sweet rest. That, God, you encamp your angels all around us as you promised you would in Psalms 91. That, God, you'll allow us to rest and then wake on tomorrow. That you'll bless the rest of our week. That, God, you preempt and block every plan of the devil to destroy or cause frustration to come up through in our lives throughout the rest of this week. God, we claim the victory even now. It's in your son, Jesus the Christ's name we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, Zion, I love you to all of those who are not members of Zion, your guests, your brothers and sisters that belong to other branches of the body of Christ. We love you. If you don't know the Lord, we want to say that we love you and God bless you. If you don't know God, Remember, all it takes is two things, confession with your mouth and belief in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you don't know the Lord, all you have to do is confess him with your mouth. Tell him that you believe in him. Tell him that you love him. Believe what he says in your heart. 
text says in Romans 10 and 9 that you shall be saved. That's it. So if you don't know the Lord and you want to get it right with him, just confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That's all that is required. Find a Bible-believing, God-fearing church and grow in the Lord. So we certainly want to see you here at Zion Baptist Church of Christ. If you don't have a church home, you want to go somewhere where you can grow and learn and be part of the work of the Lord, feel free to visit us right here in Baltimore, Maryland, 1717 Groning Highway. We are a church that is determined to serve Jesus. We are the church where Christ is head. Well, Pastor loves you. I'm going to get home and go to sleep. I pray that you all have a blessed night. I'll see you tomorrow for Bible study. Don't forget to be here at 7 p.m. We're going to have a good time as we study the word. I'll see you tomorrow right here in the kingdom.